Uh, so yeah, so um, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Stephanie Specht, and uh, I've been working as an independent graphic designer since 2006. So that's about 18 years now. I'm based in Antwerp in Belgium. Um, you could say I thrive on freedom, <laughs> the ability to reinvent myself from time to time is of super high importance. Uh, when I feel the need for change, like I want to act upon it. And this is something that I always communicate with clients as well. Um, I work for both commercial and non-commercial, more artistic clients ranging from small to large scale. And um, in this presentation, I will guide you through some self-initiated projects and end with four commercial projects where there was still a lot of freedom involved. Um, as a child, I was super introvert and I felt life was serious from a very young age. And I think drawing was my way to escape from the world. And on holidays, I would rather stay inside and draw instead of playing the sun. So I was always very pale. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was always driving, uh, a drawing like everywhere on boats. Um, my parents took me sailing quite a lot and I would bring like silly coloring books. And yeah, the sea is moving. So it doesn't matter whether you stay within the lines. Um, that's also kind of freedom. And the theme of water is kind of consistent throughout my life, I think. It's hard to explain, but um, yeah, I feel best near water. Uh, I just enjoyed being in the open air on water a lot. And it makes you wonder whether I chose the right profession, I think. My favorite TV shows during my childhood were Jacques Cousteau and National Geographic. And uh, both my grandfathers were also doing a job involved in water. So why am I a graphic designer? I don't know. Um, the biggest change um, in work life happens by simply turning inwards. I think turning my back on all like fear of missing out, just focusing on what I really love to do. And this expressed itself in free work. It often happened that during, or still happens, the, that during preliminary studies for a certain paid job, I get IDs for my own work. And if the deadlines allowed or allow it, uh, I often chose to develop this own ID instead of working for the client. And not because I didn't like the paid job, but simply because at that moment, I knew exactly what I wanted to make for myself. And I, then I get a lot of energy uh, from it. And this translated back then and still now uh, into even better work for that one client and a work of my own where I was proud of, which in itself attracted new customers. Um, and let that have been the way in which I completely involuntarily and unconsciously rolled into the independent designer profile, it came in waves. Um, I graduated in 2004 with a master's degree in visual arts at the Royal Academy for Fine Arts in Antwerp. And the time after that, um, I followed a love path to Cape Town. And in that year in South Africa, I wasn't busy thinking about my work future at all, um, except for a short episode in which I thought I wanted to study oceanography because I saw that those students could occasionally float on a boat. Uh, on the oceans and look at animals. And yeah, like I mentioned, water, you know, marine life and the watercolors and Jacques Cousteau uh, was a great fascination as a child. And that first year in South Africa was around the same time was Anderson's The Life Aquatic came out. And I know I got super excited about the typography and the scenography like back then. And I think that's the first moment I started imagining that I should just stick to graphic design. Um, at the end of 2005, I returned to Antwerp and decided to work as a graphic designer in an agency. Um, you know, being self-employed scared me a lot uh, when I was young because I, I was afraid of bookkeeping and the like. But it soon became clear that I felt very oppressed, um, inhibited and locked up in a servant role as a designer, like working in a company. I worked like from nine to five in a company for one year. 
and I missed freedom in all areas. But I can imagine like there are companies where you have that freedom and you don't have to feel oppressed. Um, so I started my own work, uh, making my own work in the late evenings and weekends during that time that I was working in a company. And this was illustrative and typographically somewhat experimental, um, mostly images without purpose because I had no client. And at a certain point, someone noticed that and I was giving an initial design assignment. And I put only these assignments on my website and then the ball started rolling. I was able to resign from that current job that made me feel miserable. And um, I started my independent path. At first it felt wonderful, but soon I was only working on textbooks and architecture submission, submission files. And um, it didn't make me very happy because of no variation in the type of jobs. Um, and so I crawled back behind my desk in the evenings and weekends to work on self-initiated work. So it's something that I always go to. Um, it's, it's an outlet. Um, what I didn't realize was that by putting um, yeah, all those official jobs that I did very well, like text-based jobs, not so creative, um, on my website every time, even more of these kind of work came my way. And um, there's a saying that energy goes where um, attention goes, and that was exactly that. I, I was unconsciously generating more of that work by showing the outside work that I could do that and that I was good at it, but I didn't necessarily like to do it. It took me about seven years before I dared to take the step and throw everything off my website and start over. And I had made so much of my own work that I was satisfied with, so I could fill uh, my website with things that I really liked myself. And every now and then I put a paid job in between and also a te text list with an overview of all paid jobs to show that I did take on um, official projects. But it was one of the best decisions I've ever made to just yeah throw away a lot of stuff. Uh, starting self-initiated projects is something I've been doing too little lately, uh, while I realize the importance of it more than enough. Giving yourself freedom in creativity is, I think, essential to come to new insights about your own work. And with freedom in creativity, I also mean time to create freely, that you have no deadlines and no limits, um, and that you know that anything is possible, including making mistakes, because you draw a lot of conclusions from that. And it is in that imperfection that in my eyes is, there's a lot of perfection. Um, the preliminary studies for a low or a poster are for me, the most interesting part of an assignment. I don't think there is a system for looking for that aha moment, you know, when you decide now the design is final, it's just, it's a gut feeling, it's intuition. You see something and every cell in your body resonates with it. Um, what I really like is playing with typography. Um, often during a preliminary study for a paid job, I scroll for hours looking for interesting typography. And it often happens that I come across letters that appeal to me very much, but may not be very suitable for that customer. And then I buy them anyway, because my heart is jubilant. Um, before I ever use it in a project, I play with it in my own work and I make things so, yeah, that I know how to how it feels to type with it, how it reads. So like, yeah, all the work that I've shown now was all um, self-initiated and um, I'm gonna show some commission projects now, but still free, free projects. I was once asked by Ruji Press to visually translate um, a random map for their publication. Today is a very, 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 very gummy place. Um, they invited 99 uh, artists and every artist received um, a different map. And this doodle map was unique and generated by a computer. And they just wanted us to take it as a starting point of a game in relation with a place. Um, I perceived the map as being very jumpy and playful, and I immediately saw the form of a fence, and this led me to the most common pangram, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And then 
yeah, I just started to connecting the dots and lines and see what would appear. And so I took that map as a starting point to draw all letters um, from the alphabet. Um, I loved, yeah, playing with the thickness and type of lines. And it's something that I do in my work a lot, just like searching for all possibilities. Um, this is the actual book. And then my page. Um, another client uh, from the last three years is the Royal Academy for Fine Arts Antwerp, where I graduated. Um, all visual output from the school went through my hands, and it's something I really enjoyed doing because I could play freely with typography as well here. The school's identity, it, it's a strange story because it was developed before I started working as a designer uh, for them. And during the first jobs, I had a couple of meetings um, and then we all made the bold decision to not go for a typical identity development for the school. This art school is so alive, so the visuals should live as well, of course, and the output is very free, something that makes me or made me during this job very uh, happy. Um, but if I look back on this project, I think the summary here is branding without branding, since the logo was never ever dominant on all media. It was more the free style that was the identity. Um, I think it was also due to the fact that in my personal work, I use a lot of quotes because of working with uh, typography or shared thoughts that I got this job uh, for, for Nike. Um, Nike. It was for Nike MBG and was a new kind of shopping app dedicated to sport, style and self-care, but only for girls who just do it their own way. Um, and for this job, I basically received a list with positive affirmations, something that I have every day for myself as well, and quotes that I could choose from and then just do my thing with it. So it was, yeah, it was really nice to do. Um, but here I was limited in typography though. Um, I could of course only use the Nike Futura version, but I was okay with it. Um, in the meantime, the app is offline again, since it was, yeah, it was a, a beta version. But I created many, many, many designs. Um, I loved doing this. Um, I'm going to end um, with one of my favorite uh, projects. I was asked to dig into the Nike and Dazed archives to yeah, reimagine the past to create the future. It was part of the Move to Zero um, campaign. And the result would be published online in issue zero from Days Digital, um, so a digital magazine that showcases different approaches to one journey. And yeah, taking inspiration from existing materials to imagine the new. Um, what, appeal, what appealed to me the most here was that there was an emphasis on the journey, like how you would get there. Um, and they asked me to keep my process, and this is yeah the the movie I made about it. And I did I did so many screen recording, and then assembled everything, and then selecting, and then speeding up, and this doing itself was also also really fun. Um, while browsing through the Nike archive, um, I found myself often like zooming in on the printed raster of the scan. So it's like really old ads. And yeah, it's something I find super beautiful, even though my work is a lot like digital and online, but the touch of ink on the paper and see like traces or age, like I, yeah, I really love it. Like a lot of graphic designers, I think. Um, and then to think of like all these dots together form um, one full image. I'm gonna just scroll a bit because it lasts actually very long, but I think you get yeah the the maze. <laughs> um, so when thinking about an online raster, you can look at a pixel as being circular in a way. 
like move to zero. Uh, it's impossible amounts of designs that can come out of this. And this brought me to the fact that as a designer or like most designers, you often think in ISO 216 terms. And this growing and dividing concept is really appealing to me. Like I've always been fascinated by the Fibonacci sequence in nature, like from one small element, we get these amazing complex multiplying forms that go on and forever and ever. And so I created very simple letters on the A4 raster. So basically by zooming in on a Nike archive and combining it with contemporary typography, new images have been created that can be seen as posters, but at the same time, they are very um, multifunctional. You can transform the publication in a new one by combining posters or cut up posters into smaller pieces. So they could use it like everywhere spread out and yeah, they could share a lot of information or, or not. Um, but yeah, like you could say, like nothing goes to waste in this design, like zooming in, zooming out. Uh, every element can stand on its own and yet everything together is a whole. Um, it's like old and new side by side, history and the now go hand in hand, like pixels meet rasters and become friends. Um, these are some of the new images. And this is the final trailer movie. Uh, animation was done by Lucas Hesse, but yeah, you, you probably won't hear the music, but I think yeah, it's also yeah. Ah, you can hear the music. Ah, okay. So this was what I wanted to share with you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. I Thank um, can't speak for others, but I personally really enjoyed this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 can, I ask, can I just... One thing that's just really beautiful about the connection between the work that you're still doing and that drawing that you were doing on a boat with the teddy bear where you were coloring in, it, it's amazing, uh, and I'm not going to make a guess of, of, of your age, but the, uh, it's amazing that there's still that sense of connection between that almost childlike almost like uh, energy that came through your approach to your coloring to how you now approach your work how do you how do you still maintain that sense of like continual focus to have such a kind of a huge amount of energy in everything that you do it's it, are there kind of main source of inspiration that still kind of uh, keep you motivated and, and continue creatively intrigued i think um like when I explained, I through like this year that I've been working, I had this one moment where I understood like, okay, I'm putting out stuff that I can do, but I don't necessarily like, and I don't get energy from it. Um, that was like a big moment, like a realization. And I can also say that until that moment, I was like a very introvert person who was not able to communicate. <laughs> and I think therefore I was lacking some social skills maybe, because it's also part of graphic design. Um, and in that moment like of, of realization, I just switched everything. Like I, I made like a 360 in my life I chose to go for stuff that I love and that's where I get like energy from. And I think also in that time before where I was like more introvert and like in my head a lot, I was also so scared of like not being perfect and like all these high standards and like not living up to anyone's expectations and 
like almost not being like not allowing to be yourself and as soon as i decided like i'm not going to do this i'm just going to be me <laughs> and i make mistakes and i will learn from these mistakes and there's something very charming about stuff that goes wrong <laughs> because you learn from it and afterwards you can laugh about it of course i'm not talking about if you have to design something for a big client and they lose millions because you did something wrong i'm not talking about that but more like allowing yourself like to just be human you know and i think that's a really important element and um like openly communicate being transparent like in a job like if something if if someone demands too much from you in a short time that that you can honestly say like hey like i have this amount of energy but i can work at my best when this is a time frame where i can do this in and of course like it's not for every job but like it should be a really important conversation i think um but yeah i i i I get a lot of energy from the idea of not being perfect and that I can live freely in my head. <laughs> I don't know if that's, right. <laughs> that's the right uh, answer, but um, just Yours. life on earth is very limited. Like I could die tomorrow. That's something that I, <laughs> it's maybe very strange to say, but I'm very. <laughs> of mortality so um i think it gives me energy that i know that i live today and hopefully i live tomorrow so like i have ideas let's put it out there create and if it's if it looks like shit it's still fine that you put it out there <laughs> I'm, 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 not trying not to, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to assess whether or not everyone who comes out of creative positions in Belgium all have the same energy. Yeah. Maybe it's a national thing, you know? I don't know. I don't know. No, but maybe, like, it's... Maybe I... This is turning a really strange conversation, but I think maybe I oppressed my inner child for a long time, and maybe around the time that I turned 30, I decided like, okay, this child can, can, can come alive again. I don't know. Yeah. No one ever asked me this question. So, yeah. the, 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 I suppose the, the question be, do you find almost as though your freedom of, of, of expression is almost like your therapy? Because you, you managed to uh, pivot away from working on work that didn't creatively fulfill you, which made you feel as though your mental state wasn't necessarily fulfilled. And then you yeah. get to your work now act almost as though, almost as your hypothetical design therapist. Yeah, no, it's true. I think, um, yeah, like not, not all jobs that I do, but a lot of jobs that I do where I get this creative freedom are very, very uh, therapeutic. Um, like I said, like this, the amount of uh, time that you get to experiment. Um, I think some people see it as a like a bridge that you have to cross, or like something like, okay, we have to go through this, and you know, because we need to get to that perfect image, and we need to get to that perfect perfect ID, and they don't or they forget to enjoy that process. Like where you you're planting seeds, you're trying out stuff, and it's by doing this thing that you can discover new things. Like you're not discovering stuff when it's final, when it's yeah, when it's like a polished like final element. I think. How do you find them? Sorry, James, were you going to say something? No, I was going to say it's, there's something quite interesting about your background being moving images. It feels a little bit like we're looking into a subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person to do that as well, to have your work as a virtual background. But there's yeah. something quite poignant <laughs> about the fact you, you mentioned that you kind of turned this, this page to get to a point of happiness through, through your, your kind of your process and way of creating. But actually seeing that surrounding you feels like a really kind of honest, non almost emotion <laughs> kind of uh, way. It feels just like a really genuine 
uh, connection between you and your work, and it's really, really visible. And I actually don't think there's been many conversations um, that we've had on here that I really see such a huge connection between personal self and the work that you actually produce. And it's really, uh, for me, it's extremely uh, motivating to get to that or to get to a sense of kind of acceptance that maybe the creative work that you produce has to be significantly more connected to your own personal psyche to get to a sense of real kind of happiness and fulfillment. I, I, I never really thought about it. <laughs> or it, it, it comes back to the feels, feels very authentic. Well, it all feels. Yeah, it feels yeah, like yeah. something, and yeah. I think that uh, it's just it, it, it brings a whole another dimensionality to how I interpret your work. So I'm extremely <laughs> grateful that you shared that story with us. Uh, I think um, what I enjoy doing is bringing life into a design. Um, I mean, I, I I love also creating like, you know, very minimal, because uh, I do identities as well. And I think I also manage to work in a minimal style and, you know, not too much clutter or like no vibrant elements, you know, if it needs to be yeah, straightforward. Um, but when I get like a campaign assignment or like a post assignment um, visually, I, yeah, I strive, I, I aim to bring something alive. I think that's how you can describe it. Um, and I, I also love looking for ways to, it's okay, you have, you have Illustrator, you have, I, I work with InDesign Illustrator, like I don't work a lot with Photoshop, but I think we all know, you know, the, the open app, you know all the effects and what you can do so well and what i also love doing is to see like okay what can i do with this you know for example like um, a gradient or um, uh, like a background um, like or what's the gradient or like this typical yeah sorry this typical effects that you can apply and if you apply them like how illustrator like gives them like just straightforward it looks like i don't know but you can use like all these effects on top of each other like that you would say like what are you really going to do this but like if you try this <laughs> like you get something really interesting you know um I have given a workshop about this, like uh, everyone had to um, like design the word read me and um, in a type that they chose and then they could only play with the if effects in InDesign and the effects in InDesign are very less than or little than in Illustrator. And it was really interesting to see what everyone came up like by just using these in my eyes, like boring tools, but if you, you know, like put them on top and like just that's what I mean with like putting life in it, like not taking it as like, okay, this is what is offered to you. And it's, it's one thing, like, no, just like try everything, try everything. So maybe an abstract explanation. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask something because you were talking about um, how. Yeah, you're bringing life to whatever you're trying to do. And I know earlier you spoke about the fact you were really shy, reserved, and lacked social skills. <laughs> um, do you feel like by pursuing doing the work you want, that also has changed the, not even your introversion, but like it has changed how you communicate to others outside of work as well, or like how you behave with others? Yeah, yeah, I think so. That, um, because yeah, for graphic designers, like it's your way of it's your extra language that you have, like to communicate with people. And once you feel that it's aligned with who you are, who you truly are, I think you are less afraid of being yourself and speaking your truths. You know, it's also the word freedom. The freedom for me, it's, it's not only important like as a designer, like on paper or on screen, but also in your head, like being free to explore whatever you want and not putting 
yeah rules for yourself like to not live in a prison in your mind and by taking this away like i think you can change or your personality like it changes or become more open yeah thanks this is an interesting <laughs> conversation <laughs> 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 I have a question. I have a question for you. Hey, uh, first of all, thank you, you. Thank you. It was amazing. Honestly, uh, I just really loved like the tension between water and stone, as in like all these like beautiful childhood memories with the oceans and your love for the water, and then this other side, really like the love for architecture and everything re being really regimented and perfect. So, question is: Do you feel there is a prominent side at the moment, or are you still? you know, searching for that water for happiness. And I also really love that you, always, you mentioned freedom so many times. They made me think of water as well, because the water can really go everywhere. So yeah, I was just interested in that. I think water, because that part, of, like when I was uh, in art uh, high school, I studied uh, architecture. Like it was just like a mini course because I initially wanted to become an architect. And I felt like maybe that first part of my life as a designer, like I was really thinking in this, um, like thinking more as an architect. Um, can't really explain how, but um, I, I look at it as it was a time where I was more yeah, living in, in a grid, um, having wanting to align everything. And um, yeah, I think this, the symbolism of water is something that I want to apply like on a daily basis. Um, I like the idea that, you know, like water takes the form of where you put it in. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with creativity. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, really, it's really beautiful. Yeah. We'll use that as the cover quote. Yeah. There's a couple of things, couple of things I want to copyright after your talk. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> the design therapy is amazing, actually. Yeah, I might do that. Has <laughs> anyone else got a question? I've got a very non-philosophical question. So maybe <laughs> if we're on the philosophical train, carry on with that. <laughs> no. Like it's, it's kind of kind of is I suppose just like based off the way that you talk about your work and this kind of like freedom and the potential kind of like unpredictable nature of it. How do you navigate that with a client like Nike um, and the kind of like the bigger clients where they might have an expectation of a way things should look or a kind of like house style? Like, do you kind of like put principles in place to say like I'm just going to try some cool shit and all of this stuff. <laughs> um, I think like with Nike, uh, I, I first gave them a couple of concepts, you know, and then there's like parameters, like that I say like, okay, this can, if we do this and this, then it can end in something like this. So I give them an idea of what it can look like. And in that last project, um, I think they were just really excited about the fact that it was like a multifunctional publication um, that they get a lot um, imagery, like just the combination for them, the output or the idea that it could be, that it was like one um, artwork that could be cut up into pieces, like they really liked that. And I think they knew, I, I gave them uh, my selection of the work, you know, like what I would, what, what, what I was going to use. Um, and it's staying the same for days. Like I told them like, okay, I want to use these slogans. So they, both parties knew that I was going to use that. And, um, and every uh, update, I also showed uh, pieces of the movie of the, uh, the process. So, by seeing the movies of the process, they could also already see like what direction it was going in. So this was also super interesting to, for for me to show to share with them like the behind the scenes that you normally not really do with uh, clients. Um, but I think yeah, like, like how I explained what I was going to do, what my plan was, um, and what I was going to use, that gave them 
the reassurance like okay this is something this is going to be interesting um and then i must also say like i'm not the type of designer that like if i get a project that i deliver like two designs and then you know we discuss these two designs like i often deliver up to eight different designs and i have something to say about every single design and I make sure that in these first like eight, let, let's say eight designs, that there are a couple of designs that I know that the clients is really gonna like this because it's really like what they described, it's up for the briefing. But during like how I explain it, like during the preliminary studies, like of course, like you sometimes come to like a completely different idea that you in the first Place, you maybe think like okay they're not gonna like it because it's something like 360 degrees like different but I I try to show these things as well like I put energy in preparing this as well and I must say often not always but often they're happy to see something completely different that they didn't expect like if I get sometimes I get mood boards from clients that I I know very well, like, okay, this is what they want. Like, if, if certainly if they put my work in the mood boards as well, but then I'm like, okay, but where is the surprise effect is super nice. Like, if you get something extra next to what you order, you know, and then you can choose. Yeah. And, then the, and then a super interesting conversation can take place, you know? Yeah. Mm. I was going to just build on that, that sort of question, actually. Um, Obviously, through the all the work that has been sort of behind you and you've sort of taken us through, there's a there feels like there's a very like clear thread at a like energy and sort of tonal feeling level, but maybe not that. There's a sort of like diversity in the kind of like actual like aesthetic of it. So when someone approaches you from a sort of commercial work, whether it's a Nike or wherever else it might be, what do you think they are sort of buying into? from you in your work? Is there a particular thing that they come to you for, do you think? So the funny thing, and it, I'm, I'm always surprised and I'm always, it makes me super happy um, that a lot of like my bigger clients, when they come to me and uh, they tell me what they want and they, they tell me like, okay, we've seen this and this and this from your work. It's all self-initiated work. It's crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. no one comes to me with like, ah, yeah, what you've done for that brand or 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 that uh, uh, like album cover or architecture company or whatever. It's it's super. Yeah, it's very special. <laughs> like I, so I get <laughs> commercial clients because of the free free stuff that I do. Um, for myself mm. yes, it's so it must be something that they pick up mm. work that i do like the self-initiated stuff that they feel like okay like this is a certain yeah like energy we're talking about energy like energy that we can get um from the work yeah uh no, I, my question is really basic. I've got a really basic question. I was going to say, <laughs> where do you seek inspiration for your amazing contrasty color palettes from? Um, so I love Josef Albers. You you know him, yeah. Um, so I love to. So I always start with like two colors that I feel like okay, like they. They resonate with each other. And then, you know, I stick with those two colors and then I keep on adding different colors to it to see like, okay, how is this purple going to react? So if I have a purple and a, and a, and, and, and pink, how are these two colors going to react if I put brown next to it? Like, and it's like an ongoing thing that you can do. It's like super interesting. That's some, yeah. Aside from like looking for typography a lot, like I also do a lot of color studies. What I also really like is, um, in, so I take a lot of screenshots from errors on my screen. Like if you, if an image is not loading correctly, like we all know this thing or something that is like a glitch, you know, 
I take screenshots and then I open them in Photoshop. I zoom in and then I just, yeah, I select elements from that and then I save it for later, um, stuff like that. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's nice to see very nice, colorful work on a day that's gray outside and <laughs> raining in London. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. My um, my rather basic question uh, was when you were doing the uh, the night bit of work, we, you were given access to their whole design archive. The whole design, what? Yes, yeah, so you were, when you were working on that move to zero project for Nike, were you given like basically here's our entire design advertising archive? Uh, no, they gave me. I think it was about. Uh, 100 images um, ah, right. they selected together with um, days that they felt like okay these are images that we feel are very good for this project and that's what I could work with um, and I, I remember starting the project with just like making a selection of all the images that I wanted to work and connecting them to the slogans from days and then have meetings about that um, but it was super nice to see because there were also a lot of images that were from before I was born um, and it felt kind of special because now like if you think about advertising like it's all digital super smooth it's like perfect you know like this it's impeccable and the stuff that I got to see was oh it was so charming it was mm. almost like some of them, some of the images or advertisements were, you could, I wouldn't say clumsy, but so, you no, know, you could feel like the human touch in it. Yeah, it's interesting actually, is because uh, uh, obviously you were saying that some of that stuff that you saw was before you were born. And this isn't necessarily a question directed at you, but when I saw some of that stuff floating up, like it instantly has like a nostalgia thing. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't necessarily like, you know, alive or, or aware enough of when that stuff first mm -hmm. came out. I'm wondering if like, can you, can you, can nostalgia be evoked even if you haven't experienced that era that is being kind of referenced to create mm -hmm. that nostalgic moment, if you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so at that, did you, that stuff that you weren't uh, familiar with because you weren't, uh, you know, around. Did you still feel? Did it still evoke sort of a nostalgic thing in you? Or was yeah, it more, yeah, yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah. Well, at what point? Sure. Yeah, what point does something become nostalgic? It's the craft, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's interesting. This is a very, This is a debate with Stephanie. This is going to go on for hours. <laughs> we start talking about at what point does something become nostalgic? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, Oh, there's so many more questions, but I feel as though I could what? just end up just speaking for hours. I was going to, maybe it's a very simple question and you've probably answered it already, but what would, what would, be a, what would your, be your most like top level simple advice for someone to push themselves to be more kind of playful and I guess outside the confines of design conformity? What would you think is the easiest way to get into that? Um getting rid of fear. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. not right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, really That is an interesting point though, because like it, it conversely, like when you when you are fearful, it's sort of at a nervous system level that actually sort of shuts you down in a way. It makes you, you makes kind of switch into your like other nervous system. So it's an it, interesting response. Well it help it, it makes you question your own articulation or own response to something well, with fear. Yeah, people get lazy and comfortability, don't mm, you? Yeah, they're sure predictable, yeah. you get repetitive. So yeah, yeah, there's something unpredictable in fear, isn't there? The you don't know which the uncomfort part of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Can, uh, has anyone got any other questions? Because otherwise I'm conscious of taking up too much of your time, but what, one, one final question for me. Has anyone got no good No, 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 as in, does anyone else have any other questions? Before I ask a last question. <laughs> no, no, do you have another question? Lavisa, Cassie? I mean, I have a thousand questions, but I can <laughs> find not work related. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we could, yeah, I'll leave that one to you. No, no, you can reach out to Stephanie directly. Um, 
have you got any aspirations to evolve outside evolve your work to um move into other mediums so rather than just simply being within graphic design it feels as though if you talk about water being an inspiration and its ability to shape uh, or adapt its shape and form based upon the uh, the space that it's put into does the idea of the confines of working within a digital medium or a canvas feel as though at some point that will become restrictive and does it feel as though your natural um, curiosity would suggest that maybe there's another evolution of your craft um i i don't think so uh but i can tell you that um in the last maybe four years like the urge to step away from my computer has become super big yeah. um and so i i go into these extremes i i, I work like super long and a lot and then I go away from my computer for a full day, sometimes in the middle of the week. And yeah, we have two dogs. And then I just go to the forest. I walk with the dogs. And I disconnect from everything. Mm. Um, and that allows me to spend time behind my screen. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, do, um, I do enjoy also just like instead of like going to nature like like drawing and you know trying a lot of different pens and pencils and just see like what lines i can put on paper but i must say that i'm so yeah i don't know if brainwashed is the right word but i'm so attached to digital working um so and i feel like i'm not done exploring it so i don't see myself doing other stuff uh, uh, I know I said it was the last question. Sorry, last one. <laughs> last, I promise, last one. Sorry, I don't get to design much anymore, so it's nice to ask you questions. Um, does the fearless version of Stephanie, has she attempted to redo or rebrand another architectural practice since you stopped doing it? And uh, what does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> If I'm doing rebranding for architects? Yeah, so the work for finding kind of your creative flow and, and, and your kind of true representation and reflection of your creative, I suppose, expression. Mm -hmm. If you were to reapproach the briefs that you got beforehand with this new and kind of more authentic representation of yourself, does that, does that change the level of excitement about that potential brief? Or does it still feel as though you just want to tell them to fuck off? <laughs> I don't know. I find that a super hard question. I, uh... okay, <laughs> On that note, maybe I'll stop chewing your ear off. <laughs> um, but thank you so, so much for your time. It's been, it's been yeah. wonderful. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'm sure everyone who watches this video once it's on YouTube will also really appreciate Um or ones. not. <laughs> well, no, no, I'm sure they will. <laughs> uh, I must say, I really enjoyed it. I find it very interesting because I think we discussed topics that were, they came from graphic design, but not, they were not the typical questions. And it was not a typical conversation. And I really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. We do also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. you. Have a lovely Thanks evening. Thanks so much.